There are a range of different sin that can be committed and we see them all in the Bible. But biblically, what sin would you say the ultimate sin is? With all your knowledge of the Bible, what would you say is the sin that God hates the most? Some may think it is idolatry. Some may even think that it is using the Lord's name in vain. But this is incorrect. There is a sin that caused war in heaven. It is the sin of pride. When the devil decided to exalt himself, we see in Isaiah 14 verse 12 to 14, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Lucifer was a beautiful creature in heaven. We see this in the Bible. A magnificent being. The prophet Ezekiel described him as the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Every precious stone was his covering. He was the anointed cherub who covers. He was perfect in his ways from the day he was created. Lucifer was fully arrayed by the Creator to reflect his glory. And if a spirit as powerful and as beautiful as Lucifer can fall victim of the sin of pride, then we must be careful not to be guilty of the same. Proverbs 16 verse 18 says, Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride is reflected in three ways in thoughts, in words and deeds. So there is such a thing as thoughtful pride, pride in speech and pride in action. Isaiah 14 verse 12 to 15 outlines what we should know about pride. The first thing we should note about pride is the fact that it is selfish and self-centered. The pride which Lucifer exhibited was a thoughtful pride. He had thought a conspiracy in his heart to exalt his throne above that of God. The word, I will, occurred five times in verses 13 and 14, implicating pride and self-centeredness. How can a creation conspire to be more than its creator? That's the folly of pride. The thoughtful pride of Lucifer was not hidden from God, for there is nothing secret to him. Pride made Lucifer attempt to fight against the Almighty. Having discovered that his plans have been uncovered, he was hardened by pride and subsequently tried to wage war. But pride sponsored his fall. Angel Michael and his host waged war against Lucifer until there was no place for him in heaven. Revelations 12 verse 7 and 8 relates the events of the war in heaven thus. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. Pride is that path that leads to destruction. It is quite unfortunate 
that what caused the downfall of the devil is still leading the downfall of many today. Pride will cause a person to suffer in silence when he ought to cry out for help. How will I descend so low to ask for help? He would say. Some persons will rather live in their sins than to seek for counsel and be free. Pride has led to the breakage of several homes in our society. Husband, if you are wrong, just say sorry. Wives, if you are wrong, just say sorry. Don't let pride ruin your marriage. Your relationship and marriage is more important than pride. I'm sorry goes a long way in a relationship. A proud man will do anything possible to get a leadership position. He will continuously seek opportunities to lord it over people. If you ever find anyone who is always right in his own eyes and does not take to correction, such a person is filled with pride. No one on earth is always right. Now I want to talk to you about something that shows pride in a child of God's life. A lot of people don't even know that this is a sign that pride is in their life. What I am talking about is prayerlessness. Lack of prayer is a sign that shows pride is running rampant in your life. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now focus on this phrase, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. It takes humility to totally depend on God through prayer. When we wake up and go about our day without praying to God, it could mean we can handle the matters of the day without the help of God. We put God to the side and say, Don't worry God, I have this day covered. I am the captain of my own ship and I will order my day today. We do not know what life may throw at us that day and it takes the grace of God to victoriously go through each day. From this verse, we see that one of the things that was restricting the people of God from praying and seeking His face was pride. Sometimes our flesh wants to do things by itself without God's help. It takes humility to ask for God's grace to perform tasks that we might be very skilled in doing. It might seem silly, but let's think about it. Learned skills such as writing reside in our memories. Without the proper functioning of a person's memory, it is impossible to demonstrate this skill. It's all by the grace of God. There is something very serious about prayerlessness. The link between prayerlessness and pride is undeniable. You see, when you don't pray, you are practically saying that the perfect sinless child of God, the one who never committed a sin, the one who walked on water, the one who raised the dead, the one who cured a woman with the issue of blood, the one who was born in Bethlehem, raised in Nazareth, the one who died on Friday and rose up early on Sunday morning, the one who ascended into heaven, needed to pray while he was on earth. But you don't? So Jesus needs to constantly pray and seek the face of the Father. But you don't? But we don't? I am included in this. 
Prayerlessness is one of the sure ways that shows you that pride is in your life. Over the years you have heard me say this verse, God resists the proud. If there is one thing you don't want, and I don't want, is to live a life with God against us. You must fight pride and defeat it before it defeats you. To resist pride you must clothe yourself with humility. God resists the proud just the same way he resisted the devil, but he gives grace to the humble. 